It says, A certain woman had a flow or an issue of blood for twelve years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that affliction or that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power, had gone out of him, turned around and said, Who touched me? His disciples and said to him, Lord, the multitude, multitude is thronging. You understand, Jesus was a rock star. Wherever he went, there was a crowd and everybody wanted to get in around him and touch him. They wanted to be around him, just like it is today with, with famous celebrities. They were all around him. Everywhere he went, it was like this. And they're all pushed into him and the disciples are trying to get through there and several of them have gotten knocked down two or three times and they lost Nathaniel. They don't even know where he is. He's back there in the crowd somewhere. And, 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 and out of all of it, some, he, said, he said, hang on a minute, somebody touched me. Master, look at the crowd. So of course somebody touched you. He said, no, 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 no. I felt, King James Bible says, I felt virtue. Here it says, I felt power go out of me. He looked around to see who had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Now, you know women were back then like they are today. She told every detail about what all had gone on for 18 years. She told him about all the doctors, told him about the doctor's family, what the kids were doing, what, everything. Now, you have to understand, J. Iris is standing there. His little girl is very, very sick. And Jesus is taking time out to listen to this woman. When the man comes and tells him in just a minute, don't trouble the master anymore, your little girl's dead. At that time, it would have been very easy for J. Iris to be very upset at the woman and at Jesus for not coming onto his house. And Jesus turned to him and says, don't be afraid. Only believe. Now, the, the part of the story I want to focus in is the woman with the issue of blood. And I want you to notice something here. What I want you to notice is, I want you to notice the similarities between the woman with the issue of blood and David and Goliath. Now, you know, there are not very many sermons that I know of that compare the woman with the issue of blood and David and Goliath. But that's what you have me for. But I want you to notice what happened. Notice what happened with this woman. It says um, in verse 25, certain woman, issue of blood. She had suffered many things. You knew. She had spent all that she had. She knew. Verse 27, when she heard about Jesus. Huh. When she heard about Jesus, she said, if I can but touch, verse 28, for she said, if I can only but touch his clothes, I shall be made well. She heard. She had, she had gone to every doctor that she knew to go to. And then somehow, a relative, a friend, somehow she heard about Jesus. And she heard about all the miracles that were happening and all the healings that were happening. And she said, you know, if I could just touch the hem of his clothes, I know I'd be whole. And then she comes out after him. Now, you understand, she has a flow of blood. She is ceremonially unclean. And she's now come out into public. She can technically be stoned to death by the law. She comes... She, she heard, she said, if I can but touch, and then she followed through and touched the hem of his garment. And what happened? She got healed. David heard about what would happen if you fought Goliath, and he said, I fought the lion, I fought the bear, and this uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine will be the same. And then he acted on what it was that he believed. So they heard. They said. They heard the word. They spoke the word. They acted on the word. And then they rejoiced in their victory. Do you understand these stories are a thousand years apart? And this is a principle that you find throughout the word. Now I've shared with you, if you've been here more than two weeks... You've heard this before. 
faith lives in two places. It lives in your heart and. Y'all know what the word and means? And in Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, and parts of Mississippi mean I ain't done talking yet. Faith lives in your heart and in your mouth. The area that most believers miss it in is their mouth. They'll believe something, but their mouth will be their undoing. 